In this Biotechniques video, we will be talking about and demonstrating aquatic macroinvertebrate sampling. So to give a quick intro as to why aquatic sampling is important, I'll briefly touch upon the river continuum concept, which just describes a predictable change in the macroinvertebrate community structure from headwaters to large rivers. And this is caused by differences in food resources along the stream. Since there are a lot of allochthonous inputs in headwater streams, there are also more macroinvertebrate species in a guild known as shredders. And as their name suggests, shredders shred plant material. Whereas on the other hand, the middle order reaches of the river are dominated by autochthonous resources like algae because they often have open canopies and are pretty shallow. So most of this algae tends to sit on the bottom of the river. Therefore, species that can remove algae from benthic substrates are more prevalent, and this is a guild of species known as scrapers or grazers. Lastly, in the larger rivers, the autochthonous resources still dominate, but these resources are floating algae, plant material, and other detritus, so species that can filter particles from the water column, known as filter gatherers, or species that collect particles from the benthos, known as collector gatherers, dominate the macroinvertebrate assemblage in large rivers. That being said, individual species from all functional feeding groups can coexist in all streams, and species diversity may be determined by the diversity of food resources available to the macroinvertebrate community. In addition to food resources, the physical anatomy of the stream can affect community diversity. In this diagram, you can see there are three different types of habitat within the stream. So riffles are shallow areas where water flows quickly over boulders and cobbles that break the water surface. And so you can see more texture in the water in riffle areas. Pools are areas of really slow flowing water that's often deep and is usually found on the outside bends of the river. And lastly, we've got runs, which are areas of smooth, fast moving water that can usually connect riffles and pools. So because the benthic substrates differ in each habitat, each habitat can support different species. We are going to demonstrate aquatic macroinvertebrate sampling here in Monument Creek. And because there are so many anthropogenic influences in Monument Creek that alter the watershed, we expect that there may be a decreased species richness and evenness. Therefore, macroinvertebrate sampling is important because the diversity of the macroinvertebrate community can be used as a metric for determining the health of an aquatic ecosystem. Generally, most bioassessments suggest only sampling in riffles to collect data on benthic invertebrate communities because studies have shown that riffles contain the majority of species found in the stream and riffle species are also sensitive to disturbance. That being said, if you want to assess the macroinvertebrate diversity in the entire stream, you want to make sure to sample other habitats as well. Now the best way to collect quantitative macroinvertebrate samples is with a server sampler, which only works well in riffle and run habitats because the flowing water will carry macroinvertebrates into the net. You can see that the server sampler is made up of a square frame that is connected to the very fine mesh net, like I just mentioned, will collect the macroinvertebrates. And because the flowing water carries the macroinvertebrates into the collecting net as the benthos is disturbed, the server sampler requires specific depth conditions to work properly. So here we have chosen a random riffle location for our sample site where the stream depth is lower than the height of the server sampler, but deep enough that water can flow into the sampler. To set the server sampler up, we have placed the base of the sampler firmly against the substrate and now we are disturbing the stream bed in the area inside the frame by hand. We can do this by lifting up large rocks as well as disturbing the finer substrates within the sampler frame. And we want to do this for a set amount of time. In this case, we are disturbing the substrates for 30 seconds at each sampling site. Once we've completed our sampling, we can take a look at what we've collected by dumping the contents of our server sampler into a white tray. And sometimes it's helpful to pour a little water in the net as you're dumping it to help make sure there are no invertebrates stuck in the net. We're also going to want to make sure that we add water to this tray so that we could see which macroinvertebrates we've collected. Then we can use one of these macroinvertebrate keys to help identify which species we are seeing. 
and also having a pair of forceps and a hand lens can really be helpful when trying to identify your macroinvertebrates. So here's what we ended up collecting. You can see in this video, we have a lot of little macroinvertebrates in here, and we'll go through some of the common species that you'll see and that we collected in our server sampler. Now looking at this key of macroinvertebrates in the river, we'll highlight three orders of insects that all have aquatic larval or nymphal stages. And these three orders are the caddisflies, the stoneflies, and the mayflies. So these macroinvertebrates are really common and you'll likely see some, if not all three of these orders, if you're doing aquatic sampling. Since these are insects, they have three pairs of legs and you can distinguish each order by the number of tails it has. So caddisfly larvae have either one or no obvious tails, stonefly nymphs have two tails, and mayfly nymphs usually have three tails, sometimes two. So now we can show you some of the invertebrates that we collected. Unfortunately, we did not collect any caddisfly larvae, which you'll sometimes find in their stone houses, as you can see on the key, and they're really cool. But we did collect lots of stoneflies and mayflies. Here you can see a magnified image of a stonefly, and notice it's three pairs of legs and two tails. Next we have a magnified mayfly nymph, which has three tails, although one of the tails is really short here. And we can compare the mayfly to the stonefly in the bottom right corner of this image. So that is all for this video. Hopefully you'll all get the chance to do some aquatic macroinvertebrate sampling in the future and see some of these for yourself.